really like that mini toilet. It was really cute. You didn't use it, did you? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a special edition of six pack questions. So usually I use uh, table topics, but today I'm going to use what I do for my mixtape therapy, which is uh, the game Unpack That, which is uh, toted as therapy in a box. So I'm going to kind of play therapist and you get to play. Yeah. Okay. So um, there are uh, four subjects. Uh, We're going to save a reflection for last. I have three reflection questions, so it makes six. Okay. Um, So you can choose from the bad, tough questions or the good. Oh, wait. As in, which goes first? You can, yeah, you can pick whichever one you want. Oh, do the bad, tough one. Oh, yeah, well, we got tough questions and bad. Oh, bad. The bad? All right. Yeah. All right. Ooh. What's one negative character trait that you need to work on? Ooh. <laughs> I would say, I would say it is the chaser energy. Yeah. Of wanting, I think wanting my partner to fulfill my needs. Look, there's needs that are appropriate. And then there's needs of like, I need you to make me feel okay about my life and learning how to do that for myself. I can do that for myself when I'm not in a relationship very well. But as soon as I have a partner, I want to offload. I want to like delegate the work of loving me to someone else. And so I can really kind of skimp on my own self-love which then makes for this dynamic that's not great well so self-validation is hard to come by it is and external, va- external validation is like it can be found in a lot of places yep uh actually like everywhere pretty much right right internet and everywhere so it's like um trying to uh churn up that self-validation is sometimes hard yeah it's but it's exactly that i need to work on more self-validation excellent uh uh, tough questions or the good? We'll do tough. Okay. Get them out of the way. <laughs> All right. So I put two here because I didn't know what, what I wanted to ask, but I'm going to look at them real quick. I mean, I could ask him both. We'll, we'll make like a six pack and then we got like three like uh, tall boys or something like that. I don't Sweet. know. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you this one because I, I, I maybe I won't ask you that one. What is your definition of love? Ooh. Love, I think, is that is a that is a tough question. Mm-hmm. Not bad, but it is well, tough. Well, the, the bad we've already done yeah, the bad. Done yeah. the bad. This is just tough. My definition of love. Oh man, I think it's having. This is a really. I'm going to describe it wrong, and then I'm going to redescribe it. So it's having like a vested interest in someone else's happiness, but not in terms of what that can provide for you. It's just genuinely wanting someone else to be happy to win to win and, and genuinely not like a you're saying it but not it's like fake. a poser right um and not oh i want my say my partner to do well so that i can reap the benefits of that or or i want them to be happy so that they're nice to me no it's like i genuinely just their well-being is tied up in my own because i i care for this person so much that their win feels like my win i would say that that's it so uh my uh my girlfriend plays the piano mm, yeah she's okay. a musician yes and this is what i have noticed i have noticed that when she either plays piano or does art or writes or sing whatever she does creatively yeah she is she's not a bad person but she's a better person yes a better version of herself when she does those things mm. and so the more she exercises that the better she is. So I try to encourage her to do as many of those things all the time. And a lot of times she's not in the mood, doesn't want to do it, whatever. But I always encourage it because I know that that helps her win. It doesn't It doesn't benefit me at all yes. to necessarily have her play music. I mean, I like her playing music, but I don't win necessarily from that. But she wins. And when she's winning and better than I'm winning as her partner, that's what I feel like. Yes. And I, I have a good example of where this can sometimes contra, contradict. I have my best friend is moving to New York City. Oh, how dare them? Him or her? Her. How dare her? She? (laughs) How dare she? I am absolutely devastated. And on a love level, on like when I think about the true feelings that I have for her and our friendship, I am just really excited and happy for her, even as I'm very sad for myself. So I would say that's like a love thing. 
in terms of how I, I get lit up when I think of her living her life in New York. And when I think of her fulfilling that dream, because I know she's had this dream for a really long time, it makes me really happy. When I think about myself in Austin, I'll get sad, but it trumps her happiness trumps that. So my best friend, um, he's also kind of, he was one of my clients and now he's my mentor. He moved to Budapest. What? Yeah. That's too far. Yeah. Like New, New York. Yeah, it's New York, easy. New easy, York easy. City. Easy. And, you know, and um, I am truly happy for him, but I, I do miss him. And, I, and I, I'll text him. I was like, man, I really want you to know, like, I miss you. I miss because he was the person I went to with all my conversations and all my problems yeah. and everything else. And so it's not like New York City where, like, she's just on one hour town yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's on a different, like, whole, like, different difference you know what i mean and so it makes our conversations hard to get and so i really value when i get to talk to him and when i get to see him but i am genuinely happy for him we've talked about that you both you and i as i recall like don't have a whole lot of friends no, i i i i mm, ooh. i just have a precious few really i put a lot of i put a lot of energy into a few people i i have i have my little circle i i, I think i'm acquaintances and friendly with a lot of people yeah, friendly but like they're that i mean i think everybody needs you know their kind of their friend group it's if, like when i think about that there's people out there that maybe i don't know they harm themselves or whatever and like they just never had any friends mm. like i'm like god damn like i mean i've always kind of had friends yeah like, you know, and can you imagine being in a space where you just really never had friends or you thought you have a friend? Maybe, you know, something about you maybe didn't make that friendship happen. So you just don't think you have friends. You mm. know what I mean? Maybe you're kind of a dick. Yeah. And so that's why you don't have friends. But you still don't have the, still the fact that you don't have friends and you're living that life without other people. That kind of sucks. I think that's a lot more common now than it used to be, too. What's that? You're just loneliness, like being isolated, not having friends. But how much is that is that? Is that person's fault? <laughs> it is some. It, I'm not trying to be a, a, a yeah, jerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. There's personal responsibility for everything, I think. But I, I do know, especially with we're getting way off again. But here no, we go. go. Especially for Gen Z, I think for kids that live their life, a lot of their life online anyway, um, and then especially having gone through the pandemic, I think a lot of kids like in their teens, like 13 to 18 years old, do really lack a lot of in-person time can i make a side note yes so we are the weird family that does not let their kid get on an ipad or tablet amazing or but hang on it sounds really hard um <laughs> it, it, it's not easy um but let me let me say this so my daughter when she goes to school or if we go to a play place and things like that she will always say to me she'll go i want to make a friend today and I'll no. go, okay, well, just remember, not everybody wants to be everybody's friend. Yes. Right? And then she'll go, and maybe she makes a friend, and maybe she doesn't, but on the days where she doesn't, she'll come home, and she'll go, she'll, Daddy, I didn't make any friends today. Oh. You know? Um, and a lot of the interactions I see when we go to these places is, like, these other kids, like, don't talk to her and stuff. Like, they don't know how to talk. They don't yeah. know how to communicate. They don't know how to interact. And she's, like, wanting to interact with maybe the way kids used to where they kind of hug each other yeah. in and all those kinds of things and trying to figure each other out. But they're so isolated. And then they're so isolated from no interaction with their parents for being on their iPads and things like that that they don't know how to interact with other kids. Right. And that's why it's, it's not just the person's fault. I think it is how you're raised in the world in which you're born into, for well, sure. Well, and we just talk to her all the time time we do yeah. stuff with her all the time we involve her all the time you know what i mean it's much easier it's much easier to train her than to <laughs> discipline her yeah i mean you know i mean it's much easier to teach her how to like open the door and close the cabinet and do all that stuff she wants to be involved put that away for me you know what yeah, i mean like, yeah, yeah. like it's it's easier to do that i don't know anyways do you want to do the other since that was such a tough question do you want to yes. do the other one we you just want to hear it one. okay this is like bonus what are you lying to yourself about Ooh, that is no. So that's bad. No, that's tough. It's a tough question. It's what am I? Well, because I don't know what I'm lying to myself about. Let me see. I can. I all softball this one. Um. Ooh, that's such a good one. I think I'm lying to myself about my capacity for work. I think I'm working too much, and I think I am trying to say like, oh, I can totally do this when I have to realize that the nature of my work is draining in a way that it's not so much about the time, it's about the actual work itself. And so for instance, I saw 28 clients last week, which oh, is a shit. lot. Uh, your 20 is full. So just eight more than full. Um, and I think I'm saying I can be a perfectly good therapist to all 28 of those people and hopefully 
I don't think any of my clients would watch this, but I, I'm not being my best therapist. I'm not being the best therapist if I'm seeing that many people. I'm truly tapped out. You, you don't have enough, like your, your brain is such a, I mean, you're just absorbing so much. And yeah. And, and like to be cheesy, my heart, like my empathy does get lower the more people I see. I, there, I, there is empathy fatigue. So I get, I just get less engaged. I'm less present. I'm doing the best I can, but with a limited energy store. Um, and that is unfortunately kind of a function of where I am in my career that because I'm not fully licensed, um, I'm working at a lower rate. So I, I just have to, you know, work more hours to make ends meet. Um, but I'm lying that I, that I, that that's sustainable. <laughs> yeah. 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 And just just a small we on the podcast, we kind of talk about NLP when you're getting hit with all that negative energy, mm -hmm. like all day, yeah. every day. It's like, yeah. I mean, that, that's rough. Yeah. And there's some heavy hitters, too, which yeah. is trickier. <laughs> I, I bet there are. Yep. All right. So this is the good. We're 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 winding down. Um, I will pick. Mm, 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 mm. I'm not going to really do that one unless you really want to do it. Um, I'm going to do this one. What is your superpower? My superpower. It's boring because it's what we've been talking about. But, but it's it's listening and helping people in it's, that way. It's right? empathy. And I think it's being and I don't always get it right. I don't want to say that because that would be hubrisful and shitty. But I, I'm very good at reading people um, and intuiting what is going on for them. Or at least I intuit that something needs to be explored more. Or at least what, with what they're giving you. Yes. They're, the information you're giving you, you feel like you're intuitive around what they're at least giving you. Yeah. And and just like, micro, that's all you can work with. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And micro facial expressions. I can just, I can sense a lot by body language. I feel like I'm just very attuned to people. That's probably my biggest skill. Yeah. It's a, it's a good skill. Yeah. It sucks sometimes though. It does suck. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why you should be working 20 hours. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to ask you this as a bonus. Like this is way over six, but who cares? Uh, and I just want to see if you have an answer for this one. What do you think is one similarity between you and me? Ooh. I what mean, you know me on a very limited yes. basis, but like, I feel like that you could probably pick up. You're good enough to pick up some of that well, stuff. Well, I mean, I know we have factual, like factually, we both help people for a living we both have to learn not to chase people around. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of commonalities. I would say um, the one that probably stands out is really trying to find that balance of helping people, but not making it about you. Yeah. Not using it to fill, fill, in fill the holes in you. Fill the holes in you. Yeah. I would say that like dynamic is rare and something that we have in common the way i have kind of worked on that is i only do things that i'm cool doing with because i'm truly cool with it yes i don't do anything that i'm not truly cool so if someone goes oh like ah, you don't have to do all that for me i'm like don't worry about it because i've already made yes i've made my bed with it yes and if i'm not doing it it's because i don't it's want to i don't want to and not in a mean way uh but that's where that's where i have to draw the line somewhere and i'm drawing it around the things that i just don't want to do yeah this might sound crass but that is a big boon that being a therapist has given me on a crass level it's like well i get paid to do this so if i'm not getting paid i don't want to do it yeah <laughs> and what by that i mean Holding space for people in a way that does not serve me at all. I well, don't do that. Your superpower yeah. is this empathy, listening, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. So just like I, I've said, I think I said to you, like when I go out, like I'm the person that does when we're sitting here, your superpower yeah. is stronger than mine. And so I ended up talking, <laughs> I didn't talking a bunch because that is your superpower. Maybe. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. And so like, so yeah. So when you go around like doing it for free. Yes. And not in a, like in a mean way, but in not a way, a mean of, like, way but just like I, it's it, naturally who you are. Well, it, it's but it's a good reminder to be like, if I feel like I'm not getting out of anything out of this, then I'm not going to do it. So right, obviously, I don't expect to be paid by my friends and family for emotional interactions. But if I feel like it's something I keep in mind a lot more. So if I'm like, Maybe I'm genuinely enjoying their story. If this feels like labor for me to listen to them, I'm going to either kind of cut the interaction short or else 
this is weird, but I'll just like make sure that I also share something. I'm like, cool, you done? I'm going to now share with you, right? Stuff that as a therapist you wouldn't do, but right. I, I make sure I distinguish it from my work because before I worked as a therapist, I would do that all the time. I would hold space for people and it was really taxing. Yeah. Yeah. You only got so much. It's true. All right. So it's, this is way easier. This is Yay. all. Okay, good. This is reflection. The toughest ones. This is reflection. You can, you can, I'll, I'll send this way. You can borrow it. These are cute. No, I love these. Uh, Okay. What, uh, what would you tell your younger self? Oh man. So many things, but I think the, the one that stands out is the very things that are hard and that you don't like about yourself are going to turn you into a really cool person. Yeah. Yeah. You're sealing up all the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You're fixing your weakest links. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good to fix stuff and feel solid. Yes. You know? And it's happening all the time. I'm always fixing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, this never ends. It's it's a it's a constant, it's yep. a constant thing. Um, what are you still learning about life? Oh, everything. Um, I'm still learning. The thing that I'm really interested in learning right now is finding ease and joy in our current world, especially a world in which we have more than we've ever had before. We have more instant gratification than we've ever had. Seemingly all of our needs are met as never before. We get, we can have, I can, we can have food in 10 minutes delivered to our door. I can buy something in two seconds. I can, every, all my needs or wants could be immediately gratified and yet I'm not out of a job. People are unhappier than ever. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what actually makes us happy. And it seems like it's less along the lines of getting what you want and more along the lines of what you need, what you need. Sure. And, and, and weirdly, this concept of friction, which is uh, something that people talk about in the space of dopamine, which is a whole different conversation we could maybe get into one time. But we actually need things to be difficult in order to find fulfillment and joy from them. And it, it is the hard things that kind of suck on the day to day or tend to suck on the day to day that bring the most fulfillment, like parenting. And I know that parenting for you is a joy, but you know what I mean? It's like, well, oh, it's well, friction. Let's let's back up a second. <laughs> parenting is not always a joy. Right. I feel lucky to be doing it. Yes. But there are very times work. where I'm like, yeah, like, I mean, you know, yeah, we're, we're at this moment that we're recording this. We're potty training right now. Yeah. It's on the toilet. <laughs> <sighs> You know, yeah, I mean, right? like that's it's like it's like uh, my dog passed away. Oh, oh no, it's well, don't, don't you have to always walk. No, back. I just had a dog pass away too. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm empathizing. My condolences. Yes. Um, but towards the end, you know, he was losing all his functions, you know, peeing on the carpet and things yeah. like that. Right. And I was like, oh, like he's gone. Like we're done with this. Nope. Now you have a child. No, no, no. And there's, child a, and there's accident. The there's poop is a piece. <laughs> like just like the dog. I was like, ah, glad we saved that dog, that urine cleaner. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So I just asked you, what are you learning about life? Now I'm going to ask you, what are you still unlearning? Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) I am unlearning. I mean, kind of to that same. Well, no, not quite the same thing. I'm still unlearning um, to always be seeking more. That more is the answer, whether it's more work, more accomplishment, more acclaim, more stuff, more clothes, just like I'm trying to unlearn seeking more. (laughs) I, I, I haven't thought this out. Yep. I don't know if it's something that you unlearn as much as it's something that just goes away when you start engaging in life in a Mm, different way. Yeah. So like, as an example, like, um, I'm, I'm all about the, the betterment of trying to be the best person I can be. Right. And I have found that, you know, the more I take time to learn things, the more I take time to help and serve other people. And the more I do creative things as an outlet that is just for me and like kind of nobody, the, the validation is self validation. It goes out into the world and other people can have opinions, but it's like, it's for like me as my creative process. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to buy stuff. Yeah. I don't have time to consume. I'm too busy creating right. versus consuming. I'm creating relationships with other people. I'm creating new knowledge inside my brain. Like I'm, I'm active in the flow of life. So I don't have time to consume things so much so that like, just like, subconsciously I started just like 
downsizing my sneaker collection. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, like I've never felt like this before. Like I literally, I could prop, I'd say I could sell them all today and be okay. I might not be okay. Okay. But like, if I was told like, you have to sell it, like all your sneakers today, like I would, I'd be all right with it. Like yeah. I would understand that that's not really that important. You know right. what I mean? Um, it's cool to have them. I like doing it. It's a fun hobby, but like, it's not a necessity of my life. What's a necessity is that like my daughter is happy and that I have a good relationship with my, my girlfriend and the people around me and that, um, I have everything I need every day. And when you like, not to go on a ramp, but when you go to other countries, and they don't have Amazon and all the things that mm -hmm. we have here, you realize, wow, like these people are making it just fine with all yes. this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they seem kind of happier. Right. And they're going out and hanging out with their friends and they're doing all this stuff. They're meeting at bars and, you know, like they're, they're enjoying life, you know, and like, we don't do as much of that here. I feel like in the yes. US. Well, and to your point too, cause it's not just about, cause you could be learning more from what you're talking about, like you're in the flow of it and you're really enjoying it and you love the process of learning, or you could be learning from the standpoint of like, I need this so that I can go here so I can do this. Like it's more that acquiring, I need this, or I I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere where I am is not okay. I have to be somewhere else versus like, I just love your phrase being in the flow of life, which is very much to me being present, even as you are changing and growing, of course. Um, so yeah, it's what I'm unlearning is that attitude of, things are not okay as they are. I must acquire more or change things so that I can be okay. When? 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 Uh, I, I, I remember reading the story about basically that like when a sprinter, like an Olympic sprinter, when they sprint, they're not running full speed. Mm. They're running as fast as they can to maintain. Ah, proper form at that speed oh interesting i like so this. like in okay. the idea of like if you were driving a car if you were driving fast enough it would start to wobble uh, or a motorcycle would start to wobble maybe if you go fast enough there's a speed in which you can go and that's what you can maintain and i think that we probably try to go too fast yes we we, we try to push everything so hard and that's not your proper speed yeah like me and my work <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> hey thank you so much for doing thank this you. i appreciate this is it lovely. thank you so much